G'day folks. Well, for tonight's little tech video, we have the little IBM monitor that I found in the uh, junkyard. Uh, I've been trying to find some information on it, and there isn't much out there. The closest resource I found put this as a spare part for an automatic teller machine, but clearly this one's come off a bank terminal or something inside the building, given the descriptions on the burning on the CRT, and the markings and just the fact that it has a proper front fascia rather than just a flush panel mount like the um, ATMs wouldn't have control or anything like that on it, it would just be a flush mount so it's definitely a banking machine monitor but I'm not a hundred percent sure what it would plug into I'm guessing a cash register and processing terminal for transactions but still not a hundred percent sure for those interested uh, there's all the numbers on it again. I've searched model 200, I've searched the part number. The part number came up with the spare parts supply for ATMs. Uh, the ID number, I think that's like a serial number, so that wouldn't really do anything. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to work out what voltage to supply it and find out what pins. Because that's its only input. I'm guessing there's 12 volts combined in that plug and there's a fuse across here those pins there are a fuse and there's also a grounding grounding through the screws to the uh, wiring loom as well so I'm gonna have a look at it judging by the capacitors I'd say it's about 12 volts and uh, yeah I'll very carefully apply voltage starting low and getting a little bit higher to what I believe is the uh, power inputs I can't find any other resources to give me any schematics and things, so it's worth a shot, otherwise it's pretty much just a doorstop. Um, yeah, but the connector that comes in splits into two. There's an upper plug here, which looks like it goes straight into signal processing. So there's a vertical and horizontal control out here. And the lower plug is the one with the fuse and everything on it, so it's probably on-off signal and uh, main DC input. There's no sign of rectifiers that I can see, so it'll be a direct DC supply from whatever unit it's supposed to be plugged into. Uh, there's no power supply, like step down or anything from mains. It's not designed to take 120 or 240 volt AC input. Uh, it just looks like pure DC from a power supply, so I'm going to grab a uh, adapter or just a normal PC ATX power supply, and we'll go from there. But first I'm going to take this board off of course, I'll examine it, make sure the solder joints are pretty good, get the soldering iron out and see how we go. Okay, so we're definitely working under 12 volts. Uh, the heaters in the CRT come on nicely, but I'm not getting any EHT. That is to say the flyback is not energising at all, not even trying. So I'm not sure if it's, a, uh, if it's reliant on signal input up there or if there's something wrong with it. I'd, I'd at least expect like a normal monitor it would come up in voltage and just sit there waiting for a signal like I get a green glow from the display tube but there's nothing, there's no high frequency coming from the flyback or anything that I normally associate with a uh, CRT monitor of any size. Normally you can hear when it's got a HT, you can hear that high frequency but this isn't even attempting it. So I'm going to check some of these caps out. That one there looks rather nasty and that feeds into the flyback itself so that's a good start but to be honest I don't really know especially without a way of inputting signal there's not much point to repairing it at this stage but it'd be interesting. I'm sure there's good use for something like this. Just need to make up a uh, driver or something. I don't know. It's like a sci-fi type thing these days. You don't really see monitors like this anymore. It would be an awful shame to uh, throw it out. Which I won't. I'm not going to throw it out, but I would like to get it running again. Just like that radar unit. That's going to be one of my other um, late night, freezing cold day projects. Not that I don't have enough other big things to do, but yeah, eventually I'll have another look at that radar unit, which is a similar sort of problem. There's a short circuit on the primary input that's toasting some rather large resistors so there's a lot of componentry work to do on that one to get the 
inside unit working again and then I still need to find a working magnetron for the scanner so no, it's all good fun a bit of electronics well as old and nasty as this old cap looks and that's not goo from the cap that's actually uh, adhesive for mounting um, this thing actually reads spot on and is much lower ESR than a lot of cheaper caps that I've seen brand new but this one's made by Matsushita Japan so it's kind of expected that even at this age it'd still be very good so yeah there's a non-polar one in there, there's a big non-polar cap big grey one down there which I'm curious about, it does look like it's gotten pretty hot but again who knows uh, it could be a semiconductor issue in here or I might simply need to put a signal into this thing but either way I'm going to go through and test the caps I've got this nice little uh, ASR meter from uh, Gavin Curtis so why not put it to use I've used it a few times now and yeah, it's a handy little device they're well worth it well as old as these caps are they're actually coming up perfect like lower ESR than I'd ever expect and the capacitance ratings are dead on so I doubt it's capacitor issue, I think it's more a signal issue or semiconductor, something like that oh, it's been a while since I troubleshooted this sort of thing um, yeah, what else? Yeah, we'll go through and check the rest of the caps and things also scrape the rest of that Gorilla Snot off the board Gorilla Snot is one of the uh, types of adhesives they used back in the day problem is it goes semi-conductive and I can see some between some of those bridging wires it's, uh, it starts out a nice golden yellow colour like uh, contact adhesive but over time it breaks down and becomes hydroscopic and absorbs moisture and starts corroding and creating conductive traces between components and I found it in a lot of old VCRs and things the control boards would have this gorilla snot slathered on all the components at the bases to keep them still but eventually it'd start creating semiconductive traces and I can see some down there where those other two caps are, this bit down there it's gone dark brown like that and created a conductive condition and although it's only low voltage it's enough to cause problems so I'm going to clean all that up and then try it one last time and otherwise I can go back on the shelf as it is Okay, well there's a good case of Gorilla Snot problems. You can see it right around the base of that coil. See how it's going all hard? Crispy. It's because it's semiconductive, it's absorbed a lot of moisture too. You can see corrosion on those pins or legs of the components. I'm going to remove this coil assembly and these caps and uh, carefully remove the rest of that. try and break it down with acetone if it doesn't just scrape off like this most of the time it goes really hard and crispy and you can just scrape it off with the point of a screwdriver or a knife or a wire brush but yeah that's uh well what I've always been nicknamed Gorilla Snot that cap there looks like it's sort of half blown its bottom out too uh, maybe not either way that's what the meter's for Not too bad, but could be better. Very basic black and white display driver. There's really not much else to them. Is that IC? Mitsubishi. Yeah. The CRT is made by Matsushita. The ICs and things I don't really know. display tube so yeah heaters come on just don't get any illumination no hate no AHT oh, looking a lot better now got all that muck cleaned off it there's a lot of green oxide on the pins of this uh, inductor as well indicating current transfer probably between the resistor and the inductor so it wouldn't surprise me if this is all that was stopping it from starting up check the other caps and things they seem to be fine uh, the good old-fashioned Matsushita electric caps uh, I wouldn't expect anything less uh, yeah 
it's a little off to one centre but it's not broken it's just set in its little moulding off centre <laughs> at first I thought it was broken when I saw it but it's just sitting over to one side and yeah a little q-tip with a bit of acetone also helps get rid of a lot of that residue in there it's a tiny bit a lot of it's also flux residue and other crap from when they ran the board through the tank but yeah it should come up all right see if it starts up if not maybe someone's got an idea on how to get this thing to kick into life maybe it does need a signal input to trigger it i wouldn't expect it from such an old monitor but who knows yeah unfortunately we're back to uh, square one again we've got a good dc supply heaters are on but no eht nothing going on i do have a uh, function generator i've had this thing for years and years uh, dad found it in a rental property that he had down in Mornington um, I've only used it a few times but I think this might be handy for testing this because it can put out various waveforms frequency at various amplitude and also has a range on it as well I originally used this to find the scope input for the Vane uh, VP850 engine analyzer which has since passed on to another owner but it uh it does work. I've pillaged the plug off it at one point, but I've got plenty of them around. So it it works. Whatever frequency this puts out comes out through that little BNC coax connector. So I'm just going to find a coax lead and try and find an input on this monitor. I noticed there's a uh, coax connector coming through the input here, and it comes in the board up here near the power input. So I'm wondering if I uh, stuff a waveform of some description in there it might even turn on but I don't know I don't have time tonight so that's all for this one and uh, thanks for watching this old, old equipment's very interesting <laughs>